بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we will try to ponder and reflect upon سورة الطارق chapter number 86 and it is a Mecki surah which means that it emphasizes on the issue of resurrection and the day of reckoning. It emphasizes on Allah's ability to recreate and to resurrect the souls and the bodies after their death. It has short verses, few words, very strong and profound and up to the point. It begins with Allah Azza wa Jal swearing. Allah says, وَالسَّمَاءِ وَالطَّارِقُ Allah swears by the heavens and by الطارق and reiterates this by saying, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِق and what will make you to know what الطَّارِق So what is it? What is Allah Azza wa Jal swearing with? The skies and the heavens, we know. Allah has sworn so many times with that to emphasize and to bring attention to His beautiful creation, His perfect creation, the heavens, the skies above us that have no pillars holding it, that is visible pillars. And we know any structure has to have pillars, otherwise it would fall down. But the skies do not have these visible pillars. And Allah is swearing by a tariq A tariq is something that comes at night. And it's something that comes and goes. And scholars say that a tariq is explained afterwards. So what Allah says, and what do you know about a tariq To bring attention to what Allah Azza wa is swearing by, Allah says, النجم الثاقب It is the star of piercing brightness. And the stars are visible. You can see them in a clear night. They're far, far away. Some of them are stationary in the sense that they move in orbits. But some of them have a specific mission and this mission was mentioned in other verses of the Quran its job is to attack and stop the jinn from eavesdropping and the jinn which are a creation of Allah Azza wa that we do not see the Prophet told us والسلام, that the angels were created from light and the jinn were created from fire and the humans were created from what was described to you and that is clay, mud, soil. So the jinn is a nation, is an ummah which we do not see. Allah told us in Surah Al-A'raf they see you from where you cannot see them. And they have a lot of things that they differ among the humans. They fear the humans. Yet the humans without belief, without Iman, fear them. The Prophet told us والسلام, that they used to eavesdrop and try to listen to some of the things being said in the heavens. And they may and they may not. They may succeed in taking a word or two of what Allah Azza wa reveals to His angels. And the angels talk among themselves about something that would happen in the future that Allah Azza wa has revealed to them. So they climb on top one another until they reach the heavens to 
listen and they may succeed in taking a word or two before these piercing stars these shooting stars come and target them and this is how the soothsayers as in the hadith know some of the future and the prophet said والسلام, that he takes this one word that his companion of the jinn had given him and he mixes it up with 99 lies so this is the piercing star the star with the piercing light that Allah Azza wa Jal swears by and what Allah is swearing over Allah Azza wa Jal says in kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafiz that there is no human being but has a protector over him so what do we understand from this each human being as mentioned in surah al-ra'd has angels protecting him from what's in front of him and what's behind him until the decree of allah azza wa jal comes and there's no protection from that when allah wills it it happens which means that we have the athkar to recite. We have certain words and statements and phrases that we recite in the morning, in the evening, after mandatory prayers, and before going to bed. These athkar, each Muslim must say them in order for him to be protected. Allah protects him with his grace and favor from any evil thing that may happen until Allah wills that evil thing to happen. So without this shield, without this protection, you're vulnerable. It is very possible that bad things happen to you. But when you say these adhkar, the possibility shrinks until an individual is protected by Allah Azza wa Jal. So you say the adhkar, people try to give you evil eye, it deflects. People try to envy you, they cannot harm you. People try to do black magic or jinn try to do harmful things to you. You are protected by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. Until Allah wills it that this affects you for a reason and for a wisdom. So there are angels that protect you. So many times you're driving and all of a sudden something happens, you barely avoid an accident. And unfortunately, we don't remember a lot of those. Those who are fortunate, they do not forget. And they keep on remembering Allah's favors and blessings so many times. Allah Azza wa had protected us from things that were so close to happening. Yet, somehow, miraculously, it didn't. This is Allah's work, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another form of protection, or the word hafiz, hafiz is to preserve, but also it refers to record. So every soul has an angel that records everything this soul does. And on the day of judgment, you will find your record book in front of you and you can see all that you had done on earth. And then Allah Azza wa Jal, after swearing over this fact that there will be angels protecting you and recording what you are doing, so be careful, Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّ خُلِقَ let man see from what he is created. Ponder upon it. You're so powerful. You're so strong. You think that you came out of nothing and you will turn into nothing and that is it? Shouldn't you reflect on where you came from and where you should be going to? Allah says, so let man see from what he is created. Are you created from steel? Are you a man of steel? No, you're not. 
You're a human being. So what was man created from? Allah says, خُلِقَ مِمَّا دَافِقُ He's created from a water gushing forth. And this is the origin of all human beings. Water. Semen ejaculated. And this is a description. And that is why Allah says that everything that is living was created from water. Everything that's alive has water components in it. Or it was created by water that was ejaculated. And this water, it was described in other verses as maheen, which is not of great value. It is something discarded, humiliated. People consider it to be filthy, dirty. So you, 6'4", strong, bulky, rich, influential, this is your origin. Never let this go away from your mind. We have a short break, so stay tuned. Who was raised under the banner of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Their guidance. Their foundation is based on the Quran and the teaching of the Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Their example. When the sun is above the heads, the of, heads the of the people. Sayyid Rahe. This young man or young lady, on the day of Yawm Al Qiyamah, they will be under that shade, the shade of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Going in the divine direction, blessing of Allah, the world of Muslim youth, today at 3.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2 a.m. India on Peace TV. A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. Where is your paradise? According to Sayyid Al-Bukhari, volume number 8, Kitabul Adam, chapter number two, hadith number two. A man came to Allah's Messenger and asked, O oh Allah's Messenger, who is more entitled to be treated with the best of companionship by me? The Prophet said, Your mother. The man asked, Who next? The Prophet said, Your mother. The man further asked, Who next? The Prophet said, Your mother. The man asked for the fourth time, Who next? The Prophet said, Your father, which means three fourths. That is 75% of your companionship goes to your mother. And one fourth, that is 25% of your companionship goes to your father. In short, the mother gets the gold medal. She gets the silver medal, as well as the bronze medal. The father has to be satisfied with a mere consolation prize. It is specified in Sunan Nasai, Kitabul Jihad, chapter number six, hadith number 3106. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Paradise lies beneath the feet of your mother. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Peace TV presents over 100 million viewers at one of the largest peace conferences in the world, addressing a sea of spellbound spectators. Over 30 world-renowned orators on Islam with credentials impeccable. The truth of Islam. Deen is your way of life. It is our duty, our obligation. By following the Quran and Sunnah, we will give the message to one and all. One and all. With articulation exquisite. Read the book of Allah. Islam is the easy way. It's the simple way. Remind each other. The Muslim is not a source of harm for other people. Collaborate with the people for good. This is the call of Islam. With the mission of spreading the truth of Islam. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. Wherever we are, live like Muslims. Use your power. Allah is saying, why do you need anything else? This Quran is self-sufficient. The only book on the face of the globe, the Quran. How a human being should lead his life is given in this instruction manual, manual the, glorious Quran. the glorious Quran. For peace to prevail on earth in peacemakers, Next on Peace TV.
Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. So, an address to those who think nothing is like them. Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them, look at what you were created from. Whenever you look at yourself in your fancy suit, whenever you look at your bank account, always remember that Allah had created you from this gushing water. Allah has created you from the water gushing forth. And subhanallah, the hearts are as solid as stone. They never ponder and reflect. All what they see is their might and power. And that is why they're heedless. Allah Azza wa is bringing them back to square one. What were you created from? From water gushing. And it's not continuous water. It's not continuous flow. It's ejaculated. And it is discarded. It is not of value to people. Where does it originate from? يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ Allah says the Almighty that this water proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. So this is the origin where the water come from. The water that makes a human being with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. It comes from between, not from. It doesn't come from the spine bone. It doesn't come from the ribs. It comes from between these two areas. And one would may argue and say, but this is not where the semen is produced as scientific evidence and doctors say. Well, scientific evidences say, though as Muslims, we could care less. This adds some value, but to us, we believe in the Quran as it is. And we believe in it 100%, whether science approves of it or not. However, scientists say that this is miraculous because only recently they discovered that the testis and the ovary, they are produced when the embryo is in the mother's womb and the child is being made and created, this is where it originates. And this is between the backbone, the spine, and the ribs, this area. For both male and female, it starts to be created there, then it goes down to where we know where it is now with the male and the female. But the origin of it, when it was created, when the child or the infant or the embryo was in the making, the fetus, they say that this is where it originates from between the spinal cord or the backbone and the lower ribs. And subhanAllah, this was in black and white over 14 centuries ago. Only a few years ago, they have discovered it, which indicates which tells you that this is from Allah Azza wa Jal and it's not man-made. But as I stated before, as Muslims, it doesn't make any difference for us whether science confirms this or not. We believe in it because Allah Azza wa Jal has said it. In ayah number eight, Allah says, إِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَجْعِهِ لَقَادِرٍ Verily, Allah is able to bring him back. And in Arabic, it has two possibilities. Either that this gushing water that was ejaculated, Allah is capable in returning it back where it came from. And this is the weakest interpretation. And the most likely is that if you look at your origin and look at what you are now, you will die. And Allah is capable, as He created you from the very beginning, from this water, from semen, Allah is capable to bring you back to life and to resurrect you 
after dying. And when will that be? When will such bringing back of the dead be? Allah says, يَوْمَ تُبْلَ sarair. This is the day when all the secrets will be examined. What secrets are we talking about? Things that go within your chest, in your heart, things that no one knows anything about except Allah Azza wa Jal. So whatever secrets you keep, Allah Azza wa Jal will expose them on the day of judgment when He, the Almighty, resurrects all. So what's inside can only be known on the day of judgment, which means that in this life, we judge people in accordance to their actions, not in accordance to their intentions. Because this is something only Allah knows. Unfortunately, those who do not comply by the Quran and Sunnah, though they consider themselves to be Salafis, they sometimes jump to conclusions and say, you intended so and so. By saying what you had said, your intention was to be like this or that. And this is something only Allah knows. And that is why Usam ibn Zayd, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father, when he was in an expedition fighting the disbelievers and he was telling the Prophet ﷺ about the battle, the Prophet ﷺ was very happy with the news he was hearing until Usama told him about this warrior who was so strong and fierce. He was killing the Muslims left, right and center. So Usama stood in his face and started fighting with him. It was a duel and they exchanged blows, but Usama had the upper hand. Usama was telling the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet was listening. And when Usama said, O Prophet of Allah, then I got him cornered. And when he felt that he was going to die and I was going to finish him off, he said, La ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of being worshipped except Allah. So I stabbed him with my sword and killed him because he said that word fearing death and wanting to protect himself. When the Prophet heard this, he was outraged. And he said, Usama, you killed him after he said, La ilaha illallah. And Usama said, The Prophet of Allah, he said it only to protect himself. The Prophet said, Did you open his heart so that you can confirm that this was his intention? What will you do with La ilaha illallah on the day of judgment? What will you do with La ilaha illallah on the day of judgment? And he kept on repeating it and repeating it. Osama said, may Allah be pleased with him, I wished that I did not become a Muslim till that day. Meaning that I wished that on that particular day, I became a Muslim so that my previous deeds that angered the Prophet ﷺ would have been erased and I would have started a new page. This shows us that it is not for anyone to judge your